So in this video, we'll be summarizing the rules for sig figs and we'll try a few practice problems. So when multiplying or dividing, we have to consider the number of sig figs. That's what's important, how many sig figs there are in the question. When adding or subtracting, we consider the number of decimal places. It does not matter how many sig figs there are, it just matters where they are. And where they are is described by how many decimal places there are. All right, so using your calculator, um, type in this calculation. And then record it to the correct number of sig figs. Go ahead and pause the video now. Okay, I see that this number has one, two, three, four sig figs, and this number has one, two, three sig figs. So the fact that this number has three sig figs limits us to an answer with three sig figs. Okay, pause the video now. This is the answer that I got, 2.6. So this number is precise to the tenths place, this number is precise to the hundredths place. So the fact that this number is precise to the tenths place limits us to an answer that's precise to the tenths place. Here's one more. This is a bit challenging, but don't forget your rules. Okay, here's the value that I got, 140. I want to show you how I got that value. Well, let's add up the two numbers. Notice that this number here is precise to the hundredths place. Where is this number precise to? Well, this number is only precise to the tens place. So when we add these numbers up, we can only be as precise as the tens place. So this is the number we would get in our calculator. This here is the tens place. The value in the ones place is a six. So we can use this six to round us up to a four. Now, some people might be tempted um, to write the number 14. But 120 plus 16, that doesn't give us a number of 14. That's ridiculous. Um, so this zero has to be included. It's just a placeholder. Um, and notice that it's a trailing zero without a decimal place. So it's not significant.